Hello, my friends. So, if you've watched my channel, you'll know I am skeptical of natural treatments for hair loss. Nature is what is trying to make us go bald to begin with, so why would I turn to nature to fight something I know nature has already preordained for me? I think many people do in fact turn to nature because it's under the impression that if something is natural, that means it is safer or has fewer risk of side effects, which of course is wrong on both counts. Anything that works has the potential to cause side effects, and the reason why many natural treatments do not have side effects is because they do not work or provide any kind of benefit beyond just placebo. It's as simple as that. Also, anyone who thinks something is safe just because it's natural, they should try getting struck by a lightning bolt or eating a bushel of hemlock. I mean, nature is completely indifferent to human suffering, and nature isn't necessarily good. Nature can be very cruel and unforgiving. I mean, just look at what nature has done to Jason Blaha. You cannot rely on nature to give a positive outcome, and the progress we've made in the fight against male pattern baldness has been due to our willingness to conquer nature, not acquiesce to it. So if you want to fight male pattern baldness, you want to basically fight nature as strongly as you can because nature is your enemy. Don't forget that. Of course, that doesn't mean there are no exceptions, and it doesn't mean that nature cannot be used to fight nature in some instances. I mean, we can fight fire with water after all, so I want to keep an open mind and look at the use of rosemary oil in the treatment of male pattern baldness. This has long been a popular natural remedy for hair loss, and it has been promoted by naturopath quack, quacks, and it's also been promoted by bone broth slurping, gluten-free Karens at Whole Foods who believe in things like coconut oil, miracles, but what exactly is rosemary oil? Well, it's an oil pressed from the rosemary flower, which is native to Mediterranean countries like Greece. It is interestingly enough related to the hemlock plant, which is well known for containing a poison which is lethal to humans. Although in the case of the rosemary plant, it is actually safe to eat and is sometimes even used in cuisines due to its pleasant scent. Uh, the oil which is extracted from the plant has since ancient times been, times been proposed to have uh, medicinal properties. And one of those uh, medicinal properties, of course, is hair loss. Now, as interesting as these historical uses may have been, I think deferring to the knowledge of people who came from a time when people couldn't even agree if the earth is round is pretty stupid. So instead of looking at anecdotes from the ancient world, I wanted to see if there's any science to back up the efficacy of these claims. Now, I had to dig really, really hard, but I did finally find one study which compared rosemary oil to 2% minoxidil, so I was pretty excited because, you know, it was comparing it to an actual FDA-approved uh, treatment. Now, I don't know why they chose 2% over 5% minoxidil, but maybe they tried to make rosemary oil look as good as possible, and I don't know because the study doesn't disclose any possible conflicts of interest as is per standard with most studies, but anyways, the study is from Iran, and it was published in 2015 so it was uh, pretty pretty recent and it's a single blind randomized trial which in this case means only the researchers evaluating the subjects were blinded to the treatments and I think it's possible the reason why the subjects weren't also blinded is because rosemary has a very distinct odor so they probably would have known what it was so it probably wasn't even possible to uh, blind them to the study but anyways there were 100 patients with androgenic alopecia ranging from Norwood 2 to 4. Uh, the ages were 18 to 49 years old. So it was a fairly diverse group with a decent population size. So, so far, so good. Uh, the investigators measured hair count using an instrument, which I assume was a phototrichogram, but it isn't deliberately stated. So that's just what I assumed. Uh, they also had the patients do self-assessment on a scale ranging as low as negative 3, which means they felt things got substantially worse, all the way up to positive positive three, which indicates substantial improvement. They did assessment before therapy and after three months, and finally ending at six months of continued therapy. And the two groups, uh, they applied one milliliter twice daily of minoxidil 2% in one group, and rosemary oil solution was applied in the other group, still using a one milliliter solution uh, twice per day. So what were the results? At three months, there was no discernible difference in hair counts or self-assessments, and that's understandable because oftentimes even treatments that work will require more than three months before people have any visible improvement. I mean, hair takes a while to grow after all. At six months, however, there was an increase in hair count and improved self-assessment. Now, for the self-assessment, uh, I don't really care that much. I don't think it really matters that much because it's very subjective because someone may interpret even the tiniest bit of regrowth as being a tremendous success 
context, whereas someone else may not care as much. Also, it's hard to measure hair growth with uh, self-assessment unless it's very substantial because even factors like lighting and hairstyling can make the hair look thicker. Like for example, when I wake up in the morning, my hair tends to be very thick looking because of bedhead, but later on in the day, like right now, it tends to get a little bit flatter so it doesn't look as thick. Furthermore, there could be a placebo effect, especially since rosemary oil smells good and it's the active treatment that they're testing. Also, many of the subjects could have possibly have read about the purported benefits of rosemary oil or may have been biased towards natural remedies. So what I'm much more interested in are the objective changes in hair count. So in the rosemary group, after six months, the hair count went from 122 to 129. And in the minoxidil group, it went from 138 to 141. Now, although these results were supposedly statistically significant, this seems like a very small change and there are some massive flaws in these outcomes. So, for one thing, we don't even know what area of the scalp the hair count refers to. It could have very well been an area of the scalp not even affected by androgenic alopecia, like the side or the back of the head. They don't tell us, so we don't know. Moreover, we don't know if they even took the same picture in the same location with each follow-up visit. The data is extremely lacking. So, in this study... Even if we don't know what area of the scalp they've looked at, we can still nevertheless calculate the percentage change in hair growth with the two treatments. So starting with the rosemary oil, there was an increase in seven hairs out of 122 hairs. That is a 6% increase. With minoxidil 2%, it was an increase of three hairs out of 138, which is a 2% increase. So let's compare this to the results of some of the clinical trials of 2% minoxidil when it was undergoing FDA approval. I'll link the scientific articles below, uh, but the studies of 2% minoxidil show a 20 to 28% increase in hair count. And just for fun, let's look at the 5% minoxidil, which shows a 26 to 32% increase in hair count. So looking at the percent change as opposed to absolute hair count allows us to compare these studies directly, even though we don't know what area of the scalp they even looked at with the, the rosemary oil study. So looking at these numbers, it looks like the minoxidil really underperformed in the study and also that rosemary oil doesn't look anywhere nearly as good as the previously published two, uh, studies on 2% minoxidil. And this is such a small change in hair count with minoxidil that I question whether or not they even applied it correctly. A lot of people just uh, tend to pour minoxidil on the scalp or uh, they put it on the hair as opposed to the scalp. So it's possible they weren't properly educated in the uh, correct application of minoxidil, like they didn't know to massage it in. So uh, perhaps this was deliberate on part of the researchers to push a certain outcome. I mean, who knows. Now, given all this, I think the results of the study are very questionable and we can't really draw any conclusions that rosemary oil does anything at all unless we have a study that measures more areas of the scalp and gives uh, results more in line with pr the previously published results on minoxidil. Also, I think it would have been really useful if they had a real placebo of this study. I imagine rosemary oil would have not performed any better than placebo if that were the case. So this also stresses the importance of reliability. When a drug is being FDA approved, it's not just one study that's done. They can't do that because there is a chance that one study will not produce significant results just due to random chance or bias in the study, which is probably why in this study, minoxidil doesn't seem to do much uh, much at all when you know that in the FDA studies, it's actually one of the best uh, hair growth stimulants in existence. That is why there are multiple studies done in the FDA studies to confirm reliability of previous studies than this one flimsy, weak-ass study on rosemary oil, which doesn't prove a damn thing. So my apologies to every yoga mom who has ever bought a book on natural cures from Whole Foods, but rosemary oil is worthless, at least when it comes to hair loss. So if you are serious about finding hair loss, give nature the middle finger and ask your doctor about the things we know are clinically proven to work like finasteride and minoxidil. So with that, uh, I'll be back with more content soon. See you guys next time. Take care.